So, one's a hack and slash, not a hack and slash, when it's Dungeons and Dragons. Let's check this out. Dungeons and Dragons is something I've always thought was pretty cool. It's been a really, really long time since I've had an old school pen to paper D&D experience. And right now it's like most of my friends, they're not the types that are really into that. So I guess I'll stick to video games. Chronicles of Mystera is made up of two games. Dungeons and Dragons Tower of Doom and Dungeons and Dragons Shadow Over Mystera. Released in 1993 and 1996 in arcades respectively. On first glance, the games seem like rather basic hack and slash, but they have some refinements that blur the lines between belt scroller and action RPG quite a bit. Topping things off, the arcade games were produced by Capcom, who made some of the best belt scrollers to appear in the arcades. The two games are very similar, which is not much of a surprise since one's the sequel to the other, but I just feel that there's enough recycled stuff going on that the two can be pretty much reviewed together. Heck, they're part of a two-pack anyway. Tower of Doom and its sequel take place in the Republic of Daruk, and a land that's been victim to a series of monster attacks which have been growing more and more frequently. Enter a group of adventurers, a dwarf, a cleric, a fighter, and an elf. The four set out to stop the invasions at their source, a dark spire and its evil master known as Deimos. The four are joined by a thief and a magic user in Shadow over Mystera, which is set four years after the events of Tower of Doom. It is revealed that those events were just part of a bigger scheme, and there's a sorceress named Sin who's really the one calling the shots. With Deimos defeated, Sin's wrath has grown greater. What sets both of the titles in Chronicles of Mystera apart from your typical hack and slash games you'd find in the arcades would be the inventory and magic system. Where most games of this type would throw some kind of special attack at you, which comes at a cost, be it some health or an item. These games take it to a new level where there are magic attacks to be cast by all characters, although some may require magic rings which can be found throughout the game to execute them. All the spells should be familiar to Dungeons & Dragons fans. Along with the spells, there's a variety of ranged weapons to be picked up and used. Naturally bladed weapons like throwing daggers cannot be used by the cleric, but all the other characters can pick up and use the other weapons. Keeping true to D&D lore, some weapons and magic affect monsters in a certain way. For example, trolls can only be defeated by fire. There's also an experience system and your skills and stats will improve as you play. The best part about these games is the variety to the gameplay. Each stage has a few options on how to get to your end goal, branching paths you can select in the beginnings of stages, and some have secret passageways which can alter the way you traverse throughout the stage. Some later stages will also have rooms which may hide traps and treasures as well. Mix in the different ways each character can attack and you can play both these games multiple times over and not be exactly the same each time. While there is a lot that is similar between these games, there are also some differences as well. The different characters have some unique special attacks in Shadow of Mystera, which really mix up the gameplay making melee combat a bit more fun and varied as opposed to just whacking away at your enemies. That said, Tower of Doom is still very playable and possibly a bit more challenging than Shadows Over Mystera. Not that Shadows is easy at all, both games do have their moments of cheapness. The Shadow Elf boss, for example, is insanely cheap with his hold and teleport spells making him very hard to keep down. The presentation in both of these games is similar, but Shadows does seem to have some noticeable improvement in both the graphics and the sound. Little surprise as it is a sequel that was made three years later. The biggest visual change is probably in just the interface. The characters and monsters do look largely the same between both games. I also love the sound of both of these games as there is a lot of voice effects. The monster designs are a huge highlight of the game and many of the boss monsters are massive and really grab your attention. If I had to choose one of the two games, without a doubt, I would choose Shadows Over Mystera, but seeing that Chronicles of Mystera does contain both games, I don't have to. There's just so much more to Shadows. Both games are quite good, but the refinements made in the sequel make it much more enjoyable. I haven't had the pleasure of playing this game with a friend, but with the character types, it's very clear that every player can have a defined role in the gameplay, making for a much more interesting experience than your typical hack and slash. 
seems like every time I turn around, there's another Capcom belt scroller that I missed. These are two that I really wanted to check out and talk about for quite some time, especially since Shadows Over Mystera was the very last Capcom belt scroller to find its way to American arcades. I just find that really interesting. And if you wanted to check these games out for yourself, it's not hard at all to do. Along with being released on Steam, they were released on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and the Wii U digital shops. And if you don't want to spend the 15 bucks to buy them, you can emulate them. They were all running on the Capcom CPS2 hardware, so that's not difficult to do if you're into that sort of thing. But if you want to know my opinion, should you check these out, I say hell yes. They are very good, even if you're not into the usual beat-em-up belt scroller type. There's enough going on that you might not get bored with these. If you ask me, these two games really blur the lines between belt scroller and action RPG. And what games out there do you like that really blur the lines between different genres? Love to hear which ones are your favorites. Leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.